Today, we're going to have a look at some of the exciting things that have been taking place in the last few months in the North Sea. And uh, I think you'll see it's been quite active. There's lots of hope that new things coming along will actually halt the decline, bring new oil and gas to these shores. So today we're looking at uh, developments that have taken place on the United Kingdom continental shelf in the sort of uh, the last few months. Uh, we're not strict on the timing here. We've had a look at some of the recent newsworthy events that caught our eye and uh, we thought we'd do a video on them. The rest, all the other activity, we've put straight into our Trove databases. So this is what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at the West of Shetlands, the Northern North Sea, Central North Sea and Southern North Sea. And there's some of the uh, some of the opportunities that we're going to be covering. So west of Shetlands, well, we recently did a video on the Rosebank approval. There's not been too much news, although it is here. You can see uh, an article saying that Equinor are looking for a partner to take 20% of the project and could bring in one and a half billion pounds. It's quite an opportunity for a company looking to get involved in a brand new development. Now we're going to take a look at the Northern North Sea. So Total Energies have been drilling the Alwyn East well. It's 39AN59. So they're drilling it is a, an extended reach well from the North Alwyn platform. Here it is uh, located up to the northeast of the North Alwyn platform or the Alwyn North platform. To North Alwyn Field, it's the Alwyn North platform. Very easy to remember, isn't it? The Brent Group, so it's the Middle Jurassic Age, and you can see here's the oil on this cross section running west east across the field. You can see here's the oil in the, in the western panel and the eastern panel here. Before we go down into the, the lower Jurassic, the uh, the Stapfjord formation, and then on into the into the underlying Triassic. The Triassic is oil bearing, but there's actually a lot of gas here in this in these uh, Stapfjord sands. Now here's the the location of North Alwyn. It used to actually export its oil to, to Ninian, but it changed ooh, 20, 20 odd years ago, I think it was. And they decided to take the oil straight the way across, which was around the bottom end of the Pelican field and into South Cormorant and into the Brent system pipeline. That's the issue that's going to control how much they can recover from uh, this opportunity if it's successful. Now, it's said to be high temperature, but not high pressure. So it's an HT well. It's got resources of about uh, 215 billion cubic feet of gas or 26 million barrels of oil. If Cormorant platform ceases operation, then there won't be any export route. But it might be that there's some new infrastructure that may come into the region here in and around the uh, Hutton, Northwest Hutton, time will tell. This is a, a basically a floating production platform. It's a semi-submersible, as you can see, back in Kishorn Port. And it's essentially the uh, decommissioning of a, of a rig that was originally a, a drilling rig constructed back in 1976. Now you can see it's had a variety of names, Nortrol, Alibaba converted in 1991, became the Emerald producer. It worked on the Emerald field, which is, is now the sort of the Cheviot development, if it goes ahead, the Galley field. And most recently, it was on Southwest Don and, and Don West uh, with Enquest, ceased production back in 2021, known more recently as the Northern producer. Now its decommissioning is in uh, 2023. So it's had a 47 year life. So now if we have a look at the Central North Sea, a lot going on in this area. Start with the uh, K2 discovery. And, and this is, uh, uh, Ithaca Energy with partners Dana. You can see on this map here that uh, here's the Everest gas field here and just to the southwest here's the K2 prospect and K2 North prospect. We understand with uh, K2 it was drilling this uh, this amplitude anomaly here. It's within the Paleocene sands. It's pre-drill. Well it was predicted to be of the order of uh, 11 to 20 million barrels of oil. The well 2214C10 it has drilled. We're still waiting to see the results of that and we'll give those in the next update. Now here's the entry that we have in Trove and you can see we have all the press releases or a lot of the most relevant ones. Show the locations of the wells, maps, cross sections and, and everything. And, and that's all been collated into Trove. We've been collating for over a decade so that you don't have to. Uh, Seagull, this is uh, BP. And it's basically a subsea tieback to ETAP. Now, here's a picture of the uh, of the structure here. You can see it's a relatively small feature at 9.3 square kilometers closure. It's a very, very thick reservoir. And here's the Reservoir Sands, 1,092 foot oil column. It's about the same height as the uh, the Chrysler building in New York City. So it's 40 to 60 million barrels of oil equivalent. It's going to cost in the order of $360 million to actually drill the wells and tie them back 
it's now on stream. It's really got a, a great uh, rate of return. And this is the net present value, 10%, and it's giving a range of almost a quarter of a billion dollars. Now pause the video if you want to read the information here. The uh, Siegel project, it's four wells expected to deliver around about uh, 50,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. And it's tied back into the ETAP, the Eastern Trough Area Project at the uh, Central Processing Facility, which is at the Marnock Field. From there, the crude oil goes into the 40s pipeline system. The gas goes into CATS, the central area transmission system, which ends up at Teesside in northeast England. Now there is a, a well being drilled as uh, as we record this video. It's the Devil's Hole Horst, and this is uh, North Sea Natural Resources, 100% equity. It sputtered around about mid-October. The well, 2751, is targeting the Permian Zechstein, the Haupt Dolomite. This is a, an old map shown here. Here on the cross section, you can see that the uh, the structure just rises up, up to the west or to the northwest. This is the trapping mechanism. Now, there were two wells drilled, one at uh, this end of the field and this end of the prospect, the other one here. It's called a, an appraisal well. Now, we got these maps and sections from Trove. Um, if you go to the website today, everything's been taken down. There's no materials available. So in 2022, there was a 3D seismic shot. We know that it was remapped and the structure looks uh, quite uh, different now. The older material is still available. In the results we expect imminently. I have to acknowledge the uh, the work of uh, Niels Arvishuk, who uh, unfortunately passed away in uh, late April 2023. Niels was a fantastic character. He gave a, a masterclass in perseverance and commitment in actually getting this prospect drilled. So uh, irrespective of the results, uh, Result. Great effort from, from Niels to, uh, to to make this happen. Now, moving on, another piece of news, and this was uh, Hibiscus. Well, it's the sort of Anasoria partnership, I guess, of uh, Ping and Hibiscus, a 50-50 partnership. They operate the uh, the Anasoria FPSO. Now, West Teal has been, a, it's been an opportunity that's uh, been around for a long, long time. Here's Teal, which is produced back to the Anasoria FPSO. West Teal, a small accumulation that was discovered quite some time ago, many decades ago, uh, 2124. And you can see here's the location on a regional line. It's sort of downflanked from Guillemot. You can see this, in this case, it's Teal South and Teal itself. But West Teal is in a sort of a similar setting. You can see that the uh, it's in this sort of salt withdrawal. We get these pods formed. And here's this uh, Triassic and, and, and Fulmar shore face sands, uh, Triassic pods underneath. Teal has been producing from this interval here. And West Teal, well, hopefully will soon be producing back to the Anasauria. Now, we don't do all this research just to make a video. Here's the uh, entry in Trove for West Teal. You can see we've got lots and lots of information, some we showed on the previous slide. And here you can see we've got the uh, subsea layout. The, here's the FPSO located here. And then on the seabed, we've got uh, all these manifolds and these control systems and pipelines to, uh, to produce the oil back. And indeed, you can see producers from Cook in the north, Teal, Teal South, and all the way to Guillemot, which is uh, the Anasoria FPSO is located down here. There's a look at a wider view of the, the western platform. Moving on to the fine field, and uh, this is set for a tieback to the Anasoria FPSO. It's uh, Ping Petroleum and Hibiscus. They've both farmed in to the fine opportunity here. The fine uh, oil in place, that stock tank oil initially in place, 75 million barrels. This is hopefully going to move forward and uh, extend the field life of the Anasoria FPSO. More information here. Pause the video if you want to find out more about the history of fine and what the plans are going forward. And uh, here's another view from a little further afield. Isabella, this is Total Energies, and uh, they've encountered hydrocarbons. It says on the headline here, from south of Elgin Franklin. Well, Elgin's here, Franklin, you can see located on the map just here. In actual fact, it's, it's actually just down to the south of uh, Joanne Judy. 
So uh, this complex here, the ConocoPhillips, will now, of course, uh, harbour energy. Um, but this is Is Isabella. And I guess the, the, the thought is, would they actually be able to take it back to, the, to their own facilities? But of course, they're having to pass quite a number of uh, production hubs uh, on the way. It, it might be that uh, there's compatibility issues here. Total Energies uh, operate the block with a 30% equity and partners are Ithaca Energy, Neptune and Energy. And here's our trove entry for it. And uh, it's been built up with over a, a decade worth of research and collation of the material, we've done it so that you don't have to. Look out at the end, some details of our year-end sale of our Trove databases. Affleck, well, at Affleck you can see a green light for redevelopment of North Sea Field. Now I was involved in this uh, development and uh, What's quite fascinating about it was there's a very, very large gas cloud over uh, Affleck. Impossible to image the reservoir. Perhaps uh, that's now improved, but it's a, a very, very uh, difficult, challenging field to develop. We drilled two wells, one by the time I left. It was previously tied back to the Janus platform, which was decommissioned back in 2016. The idea now is that uh, oil and gas would be transported to the uh, Judy facility, uh, via the Talbot field, and Talbot is uh, it would be a, a new development uh, coming along. Pause the video if you want to read anything more on that. More news from Ithaca Energy. This time it's the completion of the acquisition of the remaining stake in the Fotler discovery. Now on the map here you can see this is the location of Fotler. It's about 10 kilometres south southeast of the Alba field. So now uh, Ithaca Energy has 100% of this. It was located in block 221B in the uh, North Sea in 431 foot of water. The field was discovered in August 2021 with the drilling of the number 12 well and subsequently appraised by two side tracks. So now it's uh, potentially a subsea tieback to existing infrastructure at Alba. So here we have the Merlock development. Essentially BP pressing ahead with the redevelopment development of the Merlock structure. On this diagram here you can see this is the central processing facility and this is ETAP, the Eastern Trough Area Project. So here's the ETAP logo down here and you can see this is the Marnock field and we can see down to the south of it this is used to be known as Skew. It was operated by uh, Shell. Uh, BP have, uh, are looking to go back in to redevelop the field. It's going to be a two-well tie back to the ETAP uh, central processing facility show here. Pause the video if you want more details. Moving on, having a look at the Southern North Sea. So this is the Urn Discovery Well. It's, uh, it's well 4227-4Z and you can see it's a small feature here. Pre-drill resources around about 37 to 133 billion cubic feet operated by Dana. You can see here's the, on the seismic down here, this is the, the sort of the pop-up block that is the, uh, the urn prospect, or now discovery. Here's the tumul opportunity here on this sort of horse-like feature. Possibilities, uh, there could be other features here. I don't know how they, how they map out. We can see as we move across here, we get towards Toll Mount. Here's a map that just shows uh, the location of Urn, and it's just off to the west of Toll Mount. This is a map from NSTA. Another news item that caught our attention, well, it was uh, IOG announcing on the 28th of September, 2023, they've gone into administration. We'll wait and see what happens there. Over the last few years, they've built up a Blythe platform and the Saturn Banks pipeline and chasing after a number of these uh, potential developments. But they were always small. Small fields just get smaller. Big fields tend to just get bigger. Seems to have played out again. So we'll see what happens to IOG going forward. And finally, I don't know if you see this on uh, LinkedIn, but we're very grateful to, to Well Informed. Here they are. They've got a list of the wells that uh, they are drilling in the, uh, in the UK and Norwegian sector. I think when we look down here, you can see dev well, dev well. So these are all development wells. There's only uh, three exploration and appraisal wells on this listing here. The rest are development. Uh, and likewise, lots of development wells in, in Norway with just one exploration and appraisal well. So uh, great information from the guys at Well Informed. And talking about being well informed, get trove. We do have a year-end sale. Uh, we're going to lock in 2023 prices if you get in touch and you order Trove databases before the 29th of December 2023. 
you need to because your competitors have trove and it's going to save you an awful lot of time in any organization so here are some other trove news videos that are on our channel they feature the north sea predominantly the uk sector but we do also have videos on norwegian assets and other parts of the north sea so have a look at the channel there's a link below you'll see lots and lots of videos and we've got more in the pipeline i hope you enjoyed it look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long bye for now